Hello, my name is Beth Dixon, and this is a video series based on Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint presentation on binomial distribution word problems. I wish to thank Mrs. Borlaug for allowing me to use your PowerPoint to make this set of videos. Our goals for binomial distributions include to compute the probabilities, to compute the mean and standard deviation, and to classify a data value as ordinary or unusual. As a quick review of binomial distributions, we want to remember that it has four characteristics. One, a fixed number of trials. Two, trials are independent. Three, each trial has two outcomes, a success or a failure. Three, the probabilities, oh, excuse me, four, the probabilities remain constant for each trial. And as a brief review of binomial distributions, remember that we need structure. You should always label your success, which is found in the problem. You should label your number of trials, N, your P, your probability of success, your Q, probability of failure, and your X, the number of successes. You should create a chart with X and P of X for your probability distribution and your X is ranging from 0 through N, the number of trials, and your formula for your probability of X is NCX times P to the X times Q to the N minus X. And we're picking up on the second and third goal for binomial distribution, which is finding the mean and standard deviation and determining whether a value is ordinary or unusual. And to do so, we'll start with the population mean. The population mean, mu, is equal to n times p. The population variance, sigma squared, is equal to n times p times q. And the population standard deviation, sigma, is equal to the square root of n times p times q. So that gives us the three formulas that we need um, <clears throat> or will use in finding the mean and standard deviation. Ms. Borlaug uses the z values and to calculate ordinary and un unusual. So z equals x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And note, a data value will be considered unusual if its z value is less than negative 2 or greater than positive 2. In other words, if it's more than two standard deviations from the mean in either direction. Notice our number line down here. Anything inside of the two standard deviations is ordinary. Anything outside the two standard deviations is unusual. If it's more or greater than two or less than negative two. The next example requires calculating the mean and standard date. <laughs> Try that again. The next example requires calculating the mean and standard deviation for a binomial and classifying a data value as ordinary or unusual. A species of frog is being studied. The probability that a frog will have white spots is 0.87. Consider a random sample of 125 of the frogs. Let x be the number of frogs with white spots in a random sample of 125. Find the mean and standard deviation. b. In a group of 125 randomly selected frogs, would it be unusual to have 13 with white spots? Justify your answer. 
First, we must determine if it is a binomial. Is there a fixed number of trials? Each trial is a frog. N equals 125. Yes. Are the trials independent? Since randomly selected, we can assume independence. Yes. Each trial has two outcomes, success or failure. Well, our success is white spots. Failure would be not white spots. So yes, each trial has two outcomes. Each frog has the same probability of P equals 0 0.187. So yes, the probabilities remain constant for each trial. And we have our four characteristics. Our binomial distribution, success is white spots. The number of trials is 125. The probability of success is 0 0.187. The probability of failure is 1 minus 0 0.187, which is 0 0.8. 813 and the number of successes is 0, 1, 0 through 125. The A part asks us to find the mean and standard deviation. And here is a reminder of the numbers from our previous screen. Our mean formula is the mean equals n times p. We simply take 125 and multiply by the probability of 0 0.187. That gives us 23.275 and follow your teacher's rules for rounding. This is our mean. The standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q. The square root of 125 times 0.187 times 0.813. Please be careful in putting this in your calculator and do not end your square root prematurely. That will change the answer. You should get as your answer 4.3593 as your standard deviation. In a group of 125 randomly selected frogs, would it be unusual to have 13 with white spots? Justify your answers. Well, here are our mean and standard deviation from part A and our Z score formula, X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. X would be the 13 with white spots. So that would be 13 minus 23.375 divided by 4.3593. Please remember to follow your order of operations um, in the fractions and to do the top of your fraction before dividing. That gives us negative 2.38. Where would that fall in our ordinary and unusual chart and number line? Well, that is more than two standard deviations below the mean. It is less than negative two and therefore would be unusual. It would be unusual to have 13 out of 125 with white spots. Here are some exercises for you to try. This concludes this set of videos. If you are a Walter State student and need additional help, please feel free to stop by and see me in the math lab in MBSS 222. Thank you.